So that's what really helped me get to that next level of like, oh, wow, I just made it. You know, it's a little small fortune, nothing. I'm not a well by any means, but it allowed me to say, oh, wow, like with very little money, I was able to make a lot of money. Yeah. And now I can use this money to learn more about the space, invest in other projects. Yeah, get experimental with it. Welcome to the House of Clay podcast, the number one podcast on culture, where we talk about movies, film, art, music, fashion, Web3, cryptocurrency, and NFTs. Guys, stay tuned, subscribe, follow us on all socials, share this podcast with your friends. I'm your co-host, Digital Jeff, and... Rolando Sanchez. And Rolando, what do we have today? What are we talking about today? Today, we are diving into Bitcoin. I okay. feel like a lot of people have heard of the term. A lot of people know what it is, but also a lot of people don't know what it is. So okay. good starting point. I feel like Episode it's a good one. starting point for our audience. You know, let's just introduce them into the world because we're going to be talking a lot about this in future episodes. So my first question for you is, what is Bitcoin? What is Bitcoin? The magic question. I'm not going to get technical about this answer. I'm going to answer it in the way the way I see Bitcoin, the way I use Bitcoin. Okay. So Bitcoin for me is a store of value. So I'll give you a, a good example that you can apply it to pretty much anybody. So if you have, let's say, for example, if you have a million dollars in your bank account right now and you transfer those. By the way, this is not financial advice. <laughs> Do your own research. <laughs> for the record. For the record. Let's say you have that million dollars in your bank account, in your savings account, right? Mm -hmm. By the year 2030, those a million dollars would only give you the purchasing power of $250,000 in today's currency. Okay. Does that yeah, make sense? because over time, the value goes down. Lower, 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 down, lower. Down, down, yeah. yeah. So with Bitcoin, it's the direct opposite. So let's say you have a million dollars and you transfer that into Bitcoin. Okay. You would get about 12 Bitcoin in today's value. Now, by the year 2030, the price prediction for Bitcoin is going to be about a million dollars. Okay. So you'll have about $12 million in value of Bitcoin versus $250,000. That's a huge difference. Yeah. Life-changing. That's the way I look at Bitcoin. What is Bitcoin to me is that. It's a store of value. And you can compare it to real estate. You know, a lot of people, instead of having money in their bank account, they buy land, property, you know, some form of real estate. C -C -C -C. That holds their value. Okay. And, or grows over time. Okay. But Bitcoin has outperformed every asset. Everything. Yes. It just keeps it, going up. It just keeps going up. Yeah. As the hype goes up, numbers go up. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> is, that, is that a song from somewhere? It's not. I just made it up. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> All right. So my next question is, from your predictions, kind of, I know you've been in the space for a hot minute. I know you're invested into a handful or of coins. Mm -hmm. um, in your opinion, what is the next Bitcoin, what coin do you foresee performing mm. the same or something along those lines? Again, no, not financial advice. Um, I think there's not going to be another Bitcoin. Like I said, it's a, it's a store of value. Um, it'll be very hard for the world to transition into a new cryptocurrency has, that has better store of value. But in the form of a cryptocurrency that could be used daily as a form of exchange, like the way we use, the way we pay with, a, you know, you go to a store, you pay a with debit a card, card, debit card, so whatever. C -C. So I believe there will be other tokens. One that I'm really bullish on, I'm really excited about, is the Terra Luna ecosystem. Okay. Um, shout out to Luna. Yeah, shout out to Luna. <laughs> and um, I feel that has a lot of potential to really become like an everyday use. Pretty much it works like your own banking system. And definitely do your own research. I mean, I, w I invite you to go just type in on, on YouTube. If you're on YouTube or you're on Google, just type in Terra Luna uh, Explained. And it'll give you a bunch of videos. Watch the videos. Do your research, to, you know, 10, 20 hours of watching videos. And you'll not only enjoy it, but you'll learn about how to use and why it, how it works. The reason I'm very bullish on it is because I use it. I'm using it right now. Okay. There's a platform being built on, that's already been built on top of Terra Luna, which is called Anchor Protocol. Anchor is using the Luna technology. Correct. To create, okay. So you need Luna to be able to access Anchor. And what Anchor does is pretty much your own banking system. Okay. You know, you're able to get out a loan from yourself, bonds. Um, you're able to loan out money. 
Shit. And then you can also, if you just leave your money, st- you know, there, you get a 20% APY per year. So let's say you have a million dollars in your bank account, transfer it over to Anchor, not financial advice. <laughs> <laughs> transfer it to Anchor Protocol, you'd be getting about two hundred, about $200,000 a year without doing absolutely nothing. Just restoring it there. Just by, yeah, by leaving it there. Nice. Correct. So it's a way to combat inflation. Inflation's at an all-time high right now, all over the world, not just in America. So it's a good way for you to keep your wealth. So that's my pick, but it's a wild pick. Uh, you know, there's Ethereum's also could be the next. Is is pretty much already there where it's, you know. It's very yeah. The I think the awareness of of it existing and the power of it is getting more mm-hmm. more out there. Um, so yeah, I, I yeah. can see why ETH. Is. Yeah, and I'll give you guys a wild card, or I'll give you two wild cards. Okay. The first wild card I give you is uh, Treasure DAO. They have the Magic Token. Okay. It's a gaming platform. You can play to earn nice. and you can trade NFTs. Um, there's a lot of different ways we can uh, monetize your NFTs. Okay. I have a lot of uh, friends, including me, myself, that are been using using um, or playing or buying these NFTs and uh, playing these games. And you're pretty much earning passive income. Um, Damn. So look into that as well. Magic Token, Treasure DAO. You do need a little bit of knowledge in the NFT space and okay. crypto space before you get into it. So it's not like as easy as let me just... Go buy it. Go buy it. Yeah, see, there's, see. There's, but we'll talk about it more in these future episodes. What's the second wild card? The other wild card is something that's been trending recently, and that's probably the only reason I'm talking about it right now. It's a f- extreme wild card. Like it could be the biggest fail, but it, you know it has a lot of potential right now because there's so much hype about it. It's called ApeCoin by Yuga Labs and Board Eight Yacht Club. Okay. Think about it like this: uh, the ApeCoin will be will be the token that people use to game. Think about Fortnite. How okay. you buy things inside the game? Yeah, like with Fortnite tokens, you can't really like exchange it for, for cash. You can't. It's not real money. Yeah, it's only exists in the game. With ApeCoin, you can sell your ApeCoin for Ethereum, Ethereum for US dollars or whatever token you want, you know, yen, whatever it is that you want. Yeah. Then now you're using a token that you can actually make money from. So Jeez. the reason it's a wild card is because it's so lo- it it. It requires the right partnerships, the right companies to start using it. And it also requires the team that's building this to really be about it in the long term of things. This is going to be like a five-year rollout probably. I don't even, I mean, I really don't know at this point. It's so new. See, see, see. Just so you guys know, I do not own one ape coin. But this is I, kind of viewing and kind of seeing yeah. who, who created it. And speaking of teams and um, the creation of different coins, mm-hmm. Who do you think invented Bitcoin? Or if you know, like, where, yeah. where, where well, does it come from? Yeah, it's funny you ask that because... So the idea of Bitcoin came from a person named Satoshi Nakamoto. Okay. Satoshi. That's somebody's name. Somebody's name, yeah. But this person's never been... Never came out and said, hey, I'm Satoshi Nakamoto. It's just... A, it's like a username. Hmm. Who's the person behind it? Nobody knows. Damn. And there's a lot of conspiracies of who the actual person is. I'll give you my conspiracy in a second. But they've never, this, this never, he's never been found, or he or she has never been found. So my theory, I'll name a few people that could be uh, Satoshi. One is Nick Sable. If you look at the Satoshi Nakamoto, the, the initials, and with um, if you think about cryptography, when you decipher things, the, the initials are the same, but except, except they're flipped. Okay. Nick Sable, Satoshi Nakamoto, their the initials was flipped. Yeah. But there's a few stories out there. So there's an actual there's an actual gentleman that was discovered by the same name and he was arrested. He was put into uh interrogation. It turns out that the guy there had no idea what Bitcoin was. <laughs> yeah. And then the Bitcoin community came in and they um they ended up helping him out. I think they donated over hundred and two Bitcoin to him, to his family, which is now worth over like five million. Yeah. You know what I mean? So there's no real, there's no real Satoshi Nakamoto. And it's a real person, but it's he's not connected to this in any way. Yeah. So this is so like weird, man. So Hal Finney is another of the cypherpunks. Cypher, the cypherpunks were the ones that were originally like testing out the beta version of what Bitcoin was. Okay. But none of them, none of the, none of the cypherpunks have have claimed I'm Satoshi. None of them. It's because this is a group of people. A group of people, correct? Okay. Gavin Anderson. Uh, I think another one was Craig Wright, Nick Sable, like I said. A bunch of people that were, in, you know, in the early 2000s, ni- late 90s, early 2000s were diving into cryptography. Okay. And what ended up happening is this 
there's this gentleman of Hal Finney. His name is Hal Finney. He received the first ever Bitcoin into his wallet. So Satoshi Nakamoto sent Hal Finney the first ever Bitcoin. Hmm. That's the digital wallet. The digital wallet, correct. Okay. It turns out that Satoshi Nakamoto, the real person, lives two blocks away from Hal Finney. Hmm. The person was arrested? The person that was arrested, correct. <laughs> the guy that had no idea what crypto was. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but then um, Hal Finney passed away in 2013 through, uh, he had ALS. And so we really, like, nobody really was able to interview him and ask him, like, hey, like, are you really this? Like, are you the, the founder. are you Satoshi? Mm -hmm. So my theory is that it, it became one of those concepts where many people got involved. All these cypherpunks got involved. Okay. And they knew how big this was going to be, how rev revolutionary it was going to become, that they decided as a way to keep the integrity to the mission of building Bitcoin, See. that they would all, like they would all be part of it, but none of them would actually take credit for Sat who Satoshi is. So they came up with his name, Satoshi Nakamoto, which is um, a made up person. So in your, in your theory, it's, it wasn't one individual person that created this, it was a group. It was a group. A team. Yeah, that's my conspiracy. conspiracy. And it's uh, just, you know, it's just my ideas. Like, you know, yeah, for, like, things has zero truth to it. And this is me researching. You know, obviously I've been into the blogging, reading blogs and since the early 2000s. Nice. Yeah, but yeah. nobody really knows who really Satoshi is. And I don't think no, nobody will ever find out. Yeah, and since you just mentioned that you've seen, I mean, you've been following, you've been keeping up with Bitcoin for years. Mm -hmm. um, it's currently at 44, 42? Yeah, 40, around 000? there. What are your price predictions for Bitcoin in the next five to 10 years? Honestly, um, so I made a video on my Instagram that got a lot of attention for my price predictions. Okay. <laughs> and I was having like fun with it, but I was serious about it too. See. So my, my price prediction for like Bitcoin specifically would easily be over a million by 2030. And I'll Thanks. not explain why right now. I think Terra Luna, by the way, again, not financial advice, guys. Do not go out and mortgage your home to buy Bitcoin. Like. <laughs> I've, the only way I've ever invested into Bitcoin is money that I have. Instead of me buying like a luxurious car or like nice clothing mm -hmm. or go on amazing vacations, instead of doing all that, I have invested into cryptocurrency. I've never like taken a huge risk in the sense of if this doesn't go well, like my family doesn't eat. Okay. It's never been like that. It's see, more, see. yeah. So, so anyways, uh, Terra Luna will be, I think by 2030, I think Terra Luna could be at 10,000. That's a very easy target. Okay. And I'll explain why in a second. And then um, I think Ethereum would be anything from 50 to 100,000 per ETH. So predicted numbers from Digital Jeff are... <laughs> and we'll go uh, back on 2030 and watch this. <laughs> a million for Bitcoin in the next five years. I'm getting nervous <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah. uh, Terra Luna, 10,000 in the next five to 10 years. Yeah. And then where do you think Ethereum's going to be? I said, uh, I would say minimum 50,000. Okay. I think I, I think on my video I said, 69,000. I could be, yeah. I've had a few tequilas thanks to Milo Jocentos. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. But let me ask you, Roland, because you got introduced to Bitcoin through me, right? Correct. Okay. What are some of the cryptocurrencies that you've invested in? Okay. So I'm currently invested into Bitcoin and Terra Luna. Okay. And then I also bought into this one coin called Vader. Okay. Which, Vader, Vader, um, Vader Protocol. Vader Protocol. Which was it was hyped up really nice. Yeah. And we're excited about it. And I still I'm still I still feel positive about it. I mean since long term. Long term, yeah, since the technology behind it is the same as Terra Luna's. Correct. So within a year it went up to like a hundred bucks. And you bought in at what price? I bought in at twenty seven dollars. I bought in at, at Luna twenty seven and it's already at yeah. ninety and it, it surpassed a hundred a few months ago. Let me ask you a question. <laughs> From the time that I told you uh -huh. to the time that you bought, how much did it go up? Yeah, when uh, you told me I think it was like at twenty two or twenty four. And I bought it in like at 27. Yeah. So yeah, and that was like less than a week. Yeah. I think with cryptocurrency, like the majority of the gains will be, will be made like in a very short period of time. Okay. So let's say it goes down and you sell. Well, first of all, you've lost money already because yeah. instead of hold, like at that point, you already, you already lost money. Yeah. So we'll just hold it. The majority of the movement happens in a very short period of time. So it moves very fast, very volatile, what they say. Okay. So let's say you buy in right now and then it drops half the price by tomorrow which could easily happen. Yep. You freak out, you sell, you're like, oh, let me just at least keep a little bit of the money that I invested. And then two weeks from today, it goes up to 200, which is very normal in the cryptocurrency yeah, space. Yeah, because we've, we've seen it 
go down. Yeah, we've seen it go down. down. So we've seen it go up and we've seen it go down. What I always tell people is like, look, if you're already going into the space of knowing that whatever it is that you invested is not going to affect your daily living, lifestyle and all that. Yeah. It's better to hold, especially if you really believe in the project. You know, with Terra Luna, like I'm using it day to day. So I know it works. So I know more people will come. It'll work even better. I'm gung ho about that. That mm-hmm. theory of just of holding because everything that I've invested into the cryptocurrency world, yeah, um, I haven't pulled anything out. I'm just letting it ride. Yeah. And it's okay to pull out though. It is, but yeah, yeah I'm kind of kind of like we just mentioned. Like I, I threw in stuff in there that I, I'd be okay if I lose it. Yeah. The only ones that I invested in are Luna, a little bit of Bitcoin, and Vader Protocol. Vader Protocol, which at. has a is it a, is that a tenth since we bought it? Yeah, yeah. Oh boy, it came all the way down. Yeah, <laughs> I did uh, recently invest into Apollo Inu. Okay. Immutable X. Like I said, it's all, do your own. Yeah. This is not financial your research, advice. Not financial advice. I'm just giving you like what my what's in my portfolio. I don't own own any ape coin. Okay. Like not one token, which is bothering me right now. <laughs> but I'm, you know, I'm using my um, experience with with trading okay. as a as a way to make decisions. So I'm fine with not having ape coin. If it if it skyrockets, you know, there'll be a, there'll be another one that that there's an opportunity to come in and you know make nice. some profit from it before we wrap up this episode i'm gonna circle back to bitcoin what is your personal history with bitcoin when did you start investing into it are you currently holding any right now so you know what's funny man so i got introduced to bitcoin in 2012 or 13 and it was by one of my best friends robert lada okay childhood best friend we were having a beer at house landing in laredo texas and he's like hey man you got to check this out and he starts telling me like he just goes on on a rant trying to explain like how the technology side of cryptocurrency and why it works. See, I got interested into it, and uh, I was like, all right, let me free, let me see how this works. So you know, started like going down the dark, deep dark side of the web, found a way to buy Bitcoin. I ended up buying Bitcoin at at the time um, about two hundred Bitcoin at a dollar and twenty cents. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> I ended up getting really er- early into the space. I'm not a pioneer by any means, but I've been a early adopter okay. into everything from cryptocurrency. I got introduced by to Ethereum in 2016 by one of my friends, Neve Drawer. Okay. Neve, shout out to Neve in San Francisco. He introduced me to Ethereum. He told me about Vitalik and what he was doing and the reason that it was going to work. And I bought a little bit of Ethereum, not as much as I wish I would have bought. See. And then uh, made a lot of uh, money in 2017 when it, you know everything blew up with er, with Bitcoin and, and Ethereum. Ethereum. By the way, to, if you wanna if you wanna look into buying cryptocurrency, there's three apps that I normally use. If you're in the United States, See. one of them is Voyager app. There's a link below, and you can actually get twenty five dollars free Bitcoin when you download the app, install the app, and you uh, buy your first one hundred dollars of Bitcoin. You're gonna you're gonna get an extra twenty five dollars for free. Nice. Yeah, and we get twenty five dollars for the show, so it supports us, supports you. And Voyager app. Voyager app. So that's the first app that I use. Uh, at the time, uh, back in going back 2017, 2016, mm-hmm. I was using Coinbase. That was uh, the only app that I knew how to use back then to be able to buy on your iPhone. It was so fun because there was only at the time there was only three tokens, and you're like just looking at those three, like you know. So every now there's like oh, there's oh, now it's like now it could be very stressful because yeah. there's hundreds of cryptocurrencies. That's why you gotta subscribe to the show so we can tell you what's hot and what's coming. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, man, I made a lot of money. I lost a lot of money too. You know, it hasn't been all sunshines and rainbows. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a very volatile space. You do got to understand the majority of projects, their ideas. Okay. And their teams that are working on their first project ever. So think of there's, there's some of the CEOs have never worked on a project before. So when you invest into these companies or these projects, these tokens, whatever that is, like you're investing into people that have never built before. Yeah. So it's important to do your research. Do your research. Exactly. And we'll talk about that in a future episode, like how to find a good project. How to project. scout good coins. Yeah. Nice. Nice. One of the things that really helped me out is in 2020, everything crashed with the pandemic. Okay. Bitcoin hit 4,000. Ethereum hit like, it was like 80 some dollars per Ethereum. See. And when that happened, I put all my money into it. I'm like, okay, this is a good starting point. So that's what really helped me get to that next level of like, oh, wow, I just made it. You know, it's a little small fortune, nothing. I'm not a well by any means, but it allowed me to say, oh, wow, like with very little money, I was able to make a lot of money. Yeah. 
and now I can use this money to learn more about the space, invest in other projects. Yeah, get experimental with get it. Get experimental yeah. with it. I was able to get into Luna when it was at three something, almost four dollars. Motherfucker. Yeah, I kept, <laughs> dude, I told everybody about it. I like, told all my friends about it. People were just like, what the fuck is Luna? What the fuck is Luna right <laughs> yeah. now? Yeah, and now, you know, it's almost at 100. I think it'll hit 1,000 by the end of the year, but, you know, don't, don't, don't take my advice at this point. If we're in the bull market, it's going to be going up, right? Yeah. So it's, I would say it's really hard for me to recommend at that point. Same. Because the odds of it going higher are s slower and smaller and smaller as it goes up higher. Yeah. You know, there's a, it's normally going to come down. We'll talk about investment strategies in one of these episodes, how, we go, how I go about investing, making sure that I'm not too emotional about the money that I've invested. Like more stoic about it. Like, okay, I put money in. If it goes down, great. If it goes up, great. There's no difference. So we'll talk about that in the future episode. I'm not a developer. I'm just an early adopter, man. That's it. 